Let's talk relationships on You Me Radio. So what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business, and love, emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty, and DJ KTE on everything from hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationships. Arguments for the grown. Get the UME Radio app to listen wherever you are. That is UME Radio. One word. Yes, we're back. Yes, we're, we're back. back. We're back. All right. Now, you know, Misty, this morning I saw a video clip on the news mm-hmm. that some cop there that held this guy down. I forgot what city it was. And they gave him, they, they gave him a chokehold. And even though yes. it, was, it, it might have been brief, but the cop was suspended without pay. Wow. So we see where they're really wow. moving on this thing wow. very okay. rapidly. So, I mean, yes. if you have enough cops around... And that we see where the effects mm-hmm. of what you're doing, the effects of what you're doing is taking immediate effect now yes, rather than is. before. Yes, it is. So that's something, to, that's something to note, yeah. Yeah, so I think you said earlier that they had banned the chokehold in New York City, in the fact sheet, they had banned that at all in New York you know, City, but I think right, right. the places now in the country that didn't have that, so I think it's now going to come in cohesive around the entire country. And that's uh, it's a good thing, you know. The thing that the flip side to, to all this is though that I want to kind of brought, bring out is that mm-hmm. they they claim the one they claim that crime is actually climbing because you know there are people saying that oh they want to really kind of get rid of the cops they want to kind of you know reform in a certain kind of way we don't need X Y Z and and so if that narrative goes up goes out where crime is increasing then we can see where that may be another negative towards um the, the police because like i said i believe cops are necessary they're here for our protection they have right. a role. but i think that um when they have extreme minds and extreme thoughts then you know we can now you know go too far with, with it so mm-hmm. even though we're looking at crime at, um, police, police brutality we're looking at uh, the fact that we want to reform the whole system we also have to keep in mind that we also don't want to see crime, see crime go up. Right. We don't want to see that. that that's a that's a counter, uh, that's a negative towards you know, the progress of what they are trying to see. So, I'm um, looking forward to a guest. I think he's delayed somehow. He's delayed a bit, but we're gonna continue on. So. Okay. I know you've lost your phone this week, man. It must be rough. Um, let me see. I just oh Lord, it like, was goodness. just so. It was really, really, you know how close our phones are to us right now. It's like next to our heartbeats. You know, <laughs> because you. we use them so much. But yeah, I, yeah, my phone got stolen, and uh, unfortunately, that's the phone that I use for work. Because wow. you know, as you know, I'm a teacher, so that's the number that I would, you know, interact with my students and some parents wow, on for the most part, and you know. I had really a long day today just trying to get back the number so you know that I could try to get back some some numbers and so on. But uh I made it. So you know I got You made it, so, yes. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm just working through that. Hmm. Yeah, that is just one of those things, you know. Mm-hmm. Technology. And wow. you know, I was while heading to the phone store today, I was just thinking, wow, we, we rely so mm-hmm. much on these technology. It feels like a part of you leaves you when you don't have them I around. Have it, I when, know. <laughs> when it's taking away from you, you feel like you know, a, piece of, a piece of your life goes with, with them. I know, I know. So, yeah, as much as we don't want to be attached to them because we work so closely with them, you know. I know, I know. It, the thing is that I have... They become know, a part of us. It's true. I have, you know, they have the text going on, blinging, then you have, then you have the WhatsApp going, then you have the, you have the right. messenger going, then you have the emails going, and most of us have multiple emails. 
we're so, going to probably have to do yeah. a show with the relationship with technology. <laughs> yes, we should. Because a relationship I think, with technology. Know, oh we we say kids are hooked, but we probably, hook, probably more hooked than they are. Oh, Lord, you know? I'm telling you. I, I have to, I have to turn off my, off my, my notifications because it's just too much. Yeah, I and, know, I know. Well, you know, and, you know some, speaking of phone, I heard some, something this morning, too. I, I saw like a, like a, um, a, what's it, a writing, and it was saying how people going to bed at nights with their phones on their oh, gas yes. on. It's a bad idea. Oh, and oh. they find that, that people getting sick is not, it's unhealthy. Oh, because no, of the to, radiation. Radiation, to not have it close to your bed, mm. your pillow, turn it off, put it away. I mean, we have enough yeah. going through our, our bodies, you know, on a daily basis when we go outside. I know, and, right? So at least it's saying when you go to your bed, please try to keep those things away from your space. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I call my husband a phone addict because he's just all, he's on his phone. Like if I, if I don't rein him in, <laughs> uh -huh. sometimes he'll be on it all day and, you know. I don't, particularly, I don't particularly like that he's on the phone so much. Mm -hmm. You know, I know wow. he's got stuff to do, so. I hear you. So you, you got to think of some way to get him distracted from it. You know, you do, do yeah. a woman I'm wit. working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> but folks, I'm you know, we, <laughs> we are wait, we're waiting on um, our guest. And for some reason, I think that there is a delay. Um, but like I said, tonight we're looking at, um, looking through the justice system. Yes. Um, through the lens, you know, of, of a lawyer. And uh, it it's, it's really is a is is a uh, a very um a very interesting thing, you know. Someone said was speaking earlier, and they said uh when you look at the word racism and slavery, you know, it, it almost right. like it's a, it's a watered down approach to kind of putting this thing back on you, you know, kind of making it kind of taking out this the real sting out of it. But you know, when I look at movies like Roots. Or even one called Django, or I think oh, there's yeah. another one they, they made. Really, really, uh, really, I was, really I was look, powerful I was stories. I was watching one last night um, called mm. Just Mercy. I don't know if you ever saw that one. No, I haven't. But I've seen, you've seen uh, um, it, The Django? Yes, yes, I oh, saw that, that one. Oh, that movie, I, I tell you. And yeah, to see, really I mean, deep. what do you call that stuff, you know? I mean, words come, like, evil come to mind. Words like, I mean, like, yeah. downright just wrong and just... Yeah, it's I mean, just, really, really, really crazy. But, you know, um, there, there was, there was a time when I didn't like to watch those kinds of movies. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, well, in Jamaica we celebrate Black History Month in yes. February, and I just never wanted to watch those movies because I'd get so upset. <laughs> I'd find myself <laughs> getting so mad. I you know. know. Like brings that emotion out, huh? <laughs> yes, and I was just saying, oh my God, I don't want to, I don't want to be like this right now. So I mm. would just try to stay away from, you know, I just watch those movies and be in tears, or you know, just wanting to fight somebody. Yeah. You know, because of the, the the injustice and the pain that 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 I I saw those those people going through, and 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 the pain that is depicted. yeah so bad it's just mm -hmm. so bad but you know as as you grow and you mature and you 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 learn certain things you know you, you try to 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 learn from from what you see and uh i'm hoping i'm hoping that the world is learning from from what is happening now even with the the, the legislations and the new laws put in place. Yeah, you know, I'm I think hoping, I'm I'm hoping that 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 is a new page to you know towards the positive where we can relate to each other in a better way, rather than through you know this kind of violence and this kind of you know taking advantage of people yeah. because of how they look, the color of their skin, and yeah. you know their class or whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that you know, it will be for the better. I am so excited tonight to hear from mm -hmm. the lawyer because I want to hear. Yeah, I'm looking forward to him. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I'm sure because we have spoken and I'm not sure why he hasn't delayed, you know, in this world and think it happens. So we got to be, be mindful of that. 
Yeah. That um, sometimes the unexpected happens. The unexpected and happens. And you have to hope that he's okay where, 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 wherever he is. Yes. Um, but the show must go on, y'all. <laughs> we're it here must- on, on uh, Let's Talk Relationships. And we're looking at all kinds of relationships, right, right, Misty? Be it yes. marriage, be it business, interrelation relationships, um, we have government relationships, um, we have people to, to, uh, to uh, people, you know, and it's funny, the last week I heard you mention uh, the word race, and someone said, there's not many races, there's, no, there's only one race, and that's the human race, you know? <laughs> and, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, I think Tony's calling now, let me just see if he's... So while we are getting, getting our guest on tonight, I would love to, to um, just bring in our our coach Raquel I know we have a very in-depth topic tonight we're talking about uh, the legal reforms and just looking at how all the protests and the, the deaths the deaths of these black people in America have changed the face of law and legislation so I'm going to invite uh, coach Raquel uh, to come in and I'd love to hear you know you know, her throwing her hat in the ring and just sharing her thoughts. Uh, Coach Raquel is in charge of, uh, she's the CEO of uh, the, the um, My Coach Ministry. Is it? I hope I'm yes, getting it that's right. correct. Okay, <laughs> right. I, I'm sorry, my, my brain just went out for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's she's, okay she's an intelligent woman and she's just so in depth Ooh, i take it so i always i always look forward to hearing from her so coach what do you think about you know the reforms and what's happening in america well you know i have a lot of thoughts on it <laughs> i know <laughs> i know <laughs> I do, I do. As a matter of fact, um, as a communication specialist, um, it has been my experience that marketing is a psychology. Mm -hmm. Communication is a psychology. The choice of words that are used, how we use them is so powerful and so important, right? right? And this is actually a topic I'm extremely passionate about and happy to join the conversation on. Well, come on in. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think one of the first thing is uh-huh. um, the words that we use, racism, right. slavery. Uh-huh. And I feel as though when we use those words, right. burden is placed on the black people. You know, it's placed on them. It's the slavery thing and the racism thing. It's it's our problem. But I think that I, I think we need to get to a place of calling it by its name, because I don't I don't believe in this word racism and I don't take it on at all. I don't believe in this word slavery and I don't take it on at all, because you see, as long as we say those words, it's about us. What I believe it is is evil, vampirism, barbarism, right? Devilish, satanic, that's what I think is happening. That's what's happening coming from the whites to the blacks, evil. That's what I think it is. And I think when we use those words, then we're talking about them, the perpetrators, not ourselves. Because I feel that when we say slavery and racism, people can say, well, I wasn't a part of it. Uh, You know, I'm not black. It's not my problem. But if you look at it and say generation of devils and vipers, you are the generation of those who robbed us and killed us, murderers. Then it's more personal to them. And that's how I feel about it. And we need to call them by name and stop making it about us because we didn't invent it. But then, you see, the, the power of words in the beginning was a word. That's right. So words create things, it creates meanings, it creates essence. And so they create, they surrounded us with these words. Yeah. You know, and we live in it. And it limits us and it subjects us to all kinds of evils, right? Yeah. And discrimination. 
and and that's what it has it has done to us because they placed it on it so placed it on us so that's how i feel about it we need to change those words that we've accepted and we need to call the evil by name and make it their problem make it about them and not about us because that's what they've managed to do by saying slavery and racism it's a black people's problem but when you call it by name evil barbarism murderers demonic satanic generation of vipers right sucking up the lifeblood out of black people then you make it their problem that's my thought and i say it boldly i'm not afraid <laughs> I, know I think you, your guest is saying <laughs> i know you're not cold yes. yes. so you're saying you but know as we someone who different. understands the, the psychology of marketing and, yes. the, and the power of words i know that those words didn't just happen to be used right they were very calculated when they say it because then they can divorce themselves from it awesome yes, welcome Instagram. welcome so <laughs> welcome right. tony thank you very much yes yes it's been a long day for all of us i'm sure but we're glad to have you and uh, we here started already. Of course, we uh, we here on uh, You Me Radio, and we on we here right. on the Let's Talk Relationships. All right. And we have a very uh, a wonderful gentleman tonight with us. Um, he's uh, Jamaican by birth, and um, I will let him give you the rest of the story. Um, take it away. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's a big task. There. It's a long story. I've been around for a minute. Uh, but as you can tell, Jamaican by birth, but American by uh, training, I guess. I've lived here <laughs> most of my life. And um, some people who are Jamaican can hear my Jamaican accent, and most people can't. Uh, so I uh, was raised in the United States. Um, and uh, went on to do a lot of my, all of, pretty much all of my studies here in the United States and attended law school about 25 years ago, 26 years ago. And I've been practicing law pretty much since then. Um, I have my own office. It's called the Wilson Law Firm. So it's in Brooklyn. And, um, that's what I've been doing for a little over 20 years. I enjoy it. I help a lot of people. I I think you're muted. Is he muted somewhere? Or? He's muted. He's muted. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you yes, now. Yes, we can hear you, you now. You were muted for a second, yeah. yeah. I was getting a call. I'm not sure if that, that's a problem. Yes, that's I, what happened. I, that is a problem, <laughs> right, sorry. So, you know, anything that you want to ask me, uh, feel free. I don't want to necessarily talk about myself too much. Um, but, you know, from a career standpoint, that's what I do. I run a general practice. and. My general okay. practice is, is pretty exciting because I, I, I work in a lot of different areas um, and I consider myself, I, I, I'm probably one of those uh, lawyers who would have been better off as a small town lawyer, you know, the <laughs> small town lawyer who does everything or almost everything. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's the way my practice uh, has turned out to be. I, I'm a general practitioner who practices law just in a, a number of different areas. All of them to me are interesting. That's why I do them. Oh, nice. Um, so, you know, whenever you guys uh, are ready, I'll, I'll read off those different uh, areas to you. Yes, yeah, so I have a question for you, uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Wilson. So now, uh, for a while, we've been looking at folks waking up to having their own businesses, right. having their own brands, not just be consumers or just um, have a memory of a work experience, but leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. So we we we're looking at 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 different ways, and 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 um on how people can look into that aspect of it, and in my knowledge, I know that you had you've had businesses before, and you've gone through that process of you know knowing how it works and the, the mechanics of it, and mm -hmm. so now we we're in a season where folks are saying, hey, the jobs are not so 
is 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 really get, getting shaky now, and folks, the companies are closing down, downsizing, and I think people are now looking more into doing something on their own. So, so what would you say to folks who wants to look into starting their own business? A lot of folks are very scared about the legal um, um, aspects of it, and how would you calm their nerves as far as um, or maybe the anxiety in starting their own business and have it legal or legitimate? Well, the first thing I gotta say is when someone starts a business, it should be based on a dream. It should be based on a dream and a projection, and the way that it generally works, especially in times of crisis, is you look at especially with your business plan, which everyone should have, what service that you can provide. And if that service is has been created out of the crisis, as we all know, the crisis, let's say, for example, the crisis that uh, has come forward with coronavirus, COVID-19, has created, for example, uh, a, a business of making masks. Right? Mm -hmm. um, right. And so someone who is a, a mask maker, like for instance, um, the church I used to attend, um, one of the brothers, his wife uh, went to school uh, to be a seamstress and it was only natural. She's not a seamstress. She actually works in a school. That's not what she does. But all of a sudden, because of this COVID-19 and the making of masks, she has a little side business now where she makes masks. And, uh, you know, she makes, she designs them, uh, or always she custom makes them for whoever wants. She puts an, a nice little price point on it. And, uh, you know, we're going to be using masks now for the foreseeable future. And That's it right. becomes a side business. Another yeah. side business you could say that has come out of it, and we saw that pretty early on, was sanitizer. There were uh, uh, companies that were uh, liquor companies, for instance, uh, who started making sanitizers from day one because the sanitizer market uh, um, had been uh, saturated and there were no sanitizers for a while, uh, hand sanitizer. So those are just examples. It may not be the great example, but those are examples. Now, let's get back to um, what we call entrepreneurship, right, which is, I think, what you're talking about here. Mm -hmm. If someone is an entrepreneur, they have usually have an idea as to what it is that they're going to do in business. Mm -hmm. And it's just like any other time, whether it be now when they may have lost their job or another time when they may have had a job, what exactly, what service are you mm -hmm. actually going to provide? What products are you actually going to provide? Mm -hmm. Did you look into the market? Did you look into the entry, the, the entry level of the market? Can you enter the market? If you enter the market, how much is it going to cost? How much capital do you need? Um, what, is, what is going to be your overhead? You know, um, in other words, what what is your business plan so you still have to do that you should still do the same thing you know um and there's so many different ways to do it there are business incubators um and maybe even more so now those are things that one can call the chamber of commerce if one is interested there's so many ways of going about it but it starts first of all with a dream and then it goes into pragmatic uh, uh, stuff like you know what's going to be your market what's going to mm -hmm. be your entry point um what's your going to be your overhead what is your cost benefit analysis what is your break-even point, right? Now, mm -hmm. you hear me talking about this stuff, hopefully I'm not confusing you. I, I, I went to business school, so I know a lot of this stuff. I have an MBA in finance, so those are the kinds of things I learned when I was in school. But awesome. even if you don't have a, a finance degree or you don't have a business degree, it comes down to, you know, what, how much is it going to cost for you to put your business together and what is your market? What is your target market and how do you project that is going to actually work for you over a particular period of time, which wow. creates an even point, right? So yes. at some point you got to break even because you, you always, you know, you, you know, no one starts a business running where they're making money from day one, right? Because at the end of the day, you're putting something in your business time and investment. At some right. point you're going to make some money. And if you make enough, you're going to break even. Then when you get past the break even point, that's when you deal with profit. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, it did. It did. Yes. And, and to um, get back to the main theme tonight, uh, Misty, you can, you can chime in here. Yes, I have a question. Uh, good night, Mr. Wilson. Good night. Good night. How are you? I am not bad at all. Good. Uh, I know, you know, our topic tonight focuses on 
the legal standpoint, you know, all the reforms nice. and, and the, the legislations that have been, you know, tabled mm -hmm. uh, from the protests. So I just wanted to know, you know, what's your take on that? How are you feeling? And, and what are the implications from a legal point of view? Uh, for you know the country and the citizens, what are the implications now that you know these reforms are you know being tabled? I, I, I'm assuming that you're talking about the police reforms. Yes, yes, okay. specifically, yes. Right, and, and of course, there's a lot going on. Right, we the country is still in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis. Oh uh, yeah. The New York, New Jersey area is actually less volatile than some of the other areas which were less volatile several months ago. So mm -hmm. we're, it's, it's, a, it's a global pandemic. It's still here. It's going to be here for a while. And I think that ultimately that story uh, has to be intertwined or definitely intertwined with what happened to uh, George Floyd. Yes. Um, and and some of the other unfortunate incidences that occurred afterwards, and that appear to be occurring fairly month, fairly on a weekly basis, on some level, somewhere in the country. Yeah. Um, the thing to understand is mm -hmm. that, for me anyway, as an African American black man, Afro Jamaican, whichever way you want to put it, a black man in America. The American. That, <laughs> and, right, exactly. American, <laughs> is that the United States of America was built on racist principles. Wow. Um, it was founded on racist principles. Um, and, and, I, and I think if I really go into history deep enough, I'll find that there was a time when it really wasn't, right? There were indentured servants in the United States that were both black and white. Um, the first black people that came to this continent were not slaves. But at some particular point, there was a decision made by the Europeans that were here, since many know that they, they, the Europeans were not the first in this part of the world, but the Europeans that were here, the settlers, uh, in Virginia in particular, decided to create some laws that made it uh, illegal literally to be black, right? Literally to be yeah. African. Branded us as three-fifths of a person yes. and, and uh, created the slave system. A lot of this, if you guys are into reading, uh, well, I'm sure everybody's into reading, but if you guys want to know, if you want to mm -hmm. know the laws in this country that were actually changed, you pick up a book called In the Matter of Color by a man named mm -hmm. A. Leon Higginbotham. Who was, who was a black man. He actually eventually became a federal judge. He might have been a federal judge when he actually wrote this. He's, he's since passed away, but it's a great book. If you're into looking at the way laws were changed to affect us. And since that time, which was in the 1600s, by the way, the laws have been changed many times that have, have affected us. Of course, many of us know about the Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah. And 1863, which was a wartime document, right? A wartime order, executive order, by the way, for those people who are familiar with executive orders, Barack Obama made quite a few of those. But Abraham Lincoln wrote this executive order, the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves in the southern states that had uh, seceded from the Union and had been fighting the Civil War. So it's important to remember that that was what it was. It wasn't a universal international freedom situation for black people. It was a document that was created for the most part as a war, uh, um, a way to bring the slaves, who many of whom had already been running away to the North from the South because they were supporting the war effort in the South with the Southern Confederates. And it brought them to the North. And uh, it, it, it worked, you know, many, I, I believe well over 100,000 black men came north and fought in the Civil War. Keep that in mind. Mm. Okay. So, in eight, by, uh, and, and of course, since it was an executive order, it could have been rescinded by anybody 
after Abraham Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln was, was murdered. As many of you know, if you know the American history, and Andrew Johnson, who was his vice president, who was a racist, became president. But he couldn't change the law. Maybe he didn't want to. He was almost impeached, by the way. <laughs> he was, he was uh -huh. all, he one vote away from being kicked out of office. So yeah. he probably didn't try to do too much. And he could have reversed it. He didn't. Nobody reversed it, in fact, because the mood of the country was that emancipation was going to be the order of the day. It issued, after emancipation, issued Reconstruction. And prior to even Reconstruction being in full, full, full uh, force, uh, in 1865, in the Constitutional Convention, convention the um, Emancipation Proclamation was made into, was, was woven into the 14th Amendment. And the 14th Amendment essentially gave freedom to every slave throughout the country, nationwide. And many of you guys have an idea, I'm sure and many of the listeners know exactly what, what that commemorated. It commemorated a day called Juneteenth. Ooh. Right, which we had to, so, yeah. Yeah, so when you hear the big deal about Juneteenth, the reason why it's such a big deal is because it was a, by this time, the Congress and the Constitutional Convention had made this entire freedom issue no longer an issue because it was now in the Constitution and it was for everybody throughout the country so that. I mean, you all may have also heard there were slaves in Texas, right, at that time. Right. But if if you if if you kind of figure it out, slaves in Texas almost doesn't make any sense. But the reason why the slaves were brought to Texas from mm -hmm. the South and from other areas uh, was because the people that brought them there knew that the Emancipation Proclamation didn't stretch out to Texas. Texas was not a slave state, right? Okay. Um, and and in fact, Texas was a state where the Confederates would have loved to have slaves expanded to. That's one of the reasons why the Civil War was fought. It was a fought over the expansion of slavery, not just the fact that slavery existed, um, because Abraham Lincoln really, even though he was morally against slavery, and of course he used his moral compass to create the Emancipation Proclamation, he actually right. believed that slavery in the states that were designated in the constitution were binding they were binding on the country and he was not going to wow. change it only thing that changed it was those uh rough and rugged states decided the slave states decided oh we're just going to secede from the union <laughs> right and we're mm -hmm. going to create a war and that was their punishment was the, 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 whatever that 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 gift it was given to them by the constitution that was essentially taken away from them during the war, never to be given back to them again. So, Mr. Wilson, yeah. uh, you know, for, fast forward to you know, twenty twenty. Yeah. How how do you think an an officer gets to the place in his mind where four of them could murder and I can't say murder, right? Uh, a man mm -hmm. with, you know. Right. So with people uh, looking uh, on, uh, um, you know, with with all that history, with with all with all the things written in the Constitution and with all the, right. the, the amendments, you know, how how do they get to that place? I'm glad you asked me that question because I was getting to that. Maybe it was taking a little while with my little history lesson there. That was good. Yeah, <laughs> good, good, good perspective. Yeah, in the United States, were slave catchers, especially in the South. Those are the people that would go out and catch slaves. And if they weren't catching slaves, they were creating an air of intimidation to keep slaves from running away. It was basically like a terrorist organization, if I were going to say. Because oh, what okay. they did was they, were, they, they created this, this whole mood of, you know, you do anything wrong, we're going we're gonna to kill you. We're going to hurt you. We're going you know, to destroy you. We're going to destroy your family. And out of that came the police force. In the North... It was less so because there weren't a lot of slaves in the North. So the police force were more like sort of, uh, you know, trying to keep uh, order generally. Um, but the police force has not evolved a lot in many of these uh, states in the sense that they have looked on people of color, especially black people, as people to be kept in some sort of order, as people that have 
you know, a, a situation where they need to be controlled or they need to be kept in a certain box. And that is why we have had police brutality, if you, you're not, you don't have to go back that far in history, as the norm, especially in communities of color, because mm -hmm. the police sort of act as an occupying force, notwithstanding the fact that in every one of the communities of color, you have working class people, you, probably, you have teachers, you have you know, doctors, you have professionals, maybe lawyers, or whoever else you have, you have people that are really, really good people for the most part, but the police have an, have a, have an attitude, an idea that they are going to come in and control you. So it's no accident when these things happen. Of course, one of the things that many of you all, many people re realize is how the, the, the rules of the police can be sort of crazy. They can put chokehold, right? They can put their knee on your neck. They can, right. you know, they, can, they, can, they can beat you. They can do all kinds of different things. They could shoot you, even if you're unarmed, as long as they feel that they're, they have some issue. You know, they, they have some kind of fear or, or some, you know, maybe you do something that, they, that they, makes them feel that they're in some kind of danger. These are all rules and they have these immunities. This has been known for some time. Mm. What happened in Minnesota in particular was, as opposed to in New York and some of the other places prior, is that it was so blatant. It was oh. so, it was in front of a camera. They right, in front, of, in front of so many persons videoing and so may, on. May I ask a question, please? Uh, go ahead, coach. Oh, hi. <laughs> so I'm Rekha. You've met me before by your phone. Hi, how are you doing, Coach? I am, I am, I am good. <laughs> I forgot not to move my neck. <laughs> um, based on everything you just said, and, and you were right to call them terrorists because that's what, that's what they were. They were, they are terrorists. Yeah. That's how I see it anyway. Yeah, some of them. But as I listen to you, my opinion, <laughs> but not yours. Just Got mine. Got it. Um, as I listened to what you have, you've said, it sounds to me that what they're doing now would be justified based on our belief or buy-in to the whole slavery argument. Even as I listened to you speak, because I already had that view, because I was saying it earlier, but then as I heard you, as you were speaking about it and discussing it, mm -hmm. If we then say, yes, we were slaves and then we were, it was abolished, so we were supposed to be free. Mm. By virtue of the whole meaning of that, it means that we're freed slaves, still slaves. Okay. So then in that sense, I feel like they have a right to do what they do because we're freed slaves. But don't you think it's, a t it's time for us to call a thing a thing and identified that um, we, were, we were human beings, we had rights that were stolen from us, taken from us, and then we were slapped with labels like slaves, um, what's the other one, racism, and those words, which for, I believe, personal opinion, not that of Yumi Radio at all, I believe as long as those terms are up on us, they can continue to behave, behave like the terrorists they are. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's a time, it's time for black people to really sit down and unpack all of this and say, hold up, I'm not a slave, I wasn't a slave, I'm a human being, but you terrorized me. When do we do that? Because I cannot see how we can own the slavery and not expect to be treated accordingly. I don't, I don't understand that math at all. Yeah, I think I, you, you're making a very good point. I think that one of the ways, and I was talking to a friend of mine just recently about this, to analyze what happened to us is that we were subject to a barbaric process and a barbaric people for centuries. Here we go. Years yes. And, and, and by no means means anything in terms of us being deserving of it or being, any being less of yeah. it. Was a, it was mm. a combination of being persuaded and basically being, you know, bullied. Terrorized. We were so terrorized. Was, right. So is it, is it, that, is it that we, it was imposed upon us? That's what you're saying? It was imposed. It, what, okay. what it was. I mean, at the end Whether of the day. Whether we were sold or not, yes. the, the, the fact is, right? 
no human was supposed to be treated that way. Correct. Even if you were sold into service, that's not what happened. Service no. isn't what happened. Slaughtering happened. Terrorism happened. Rapes Murder happened. happened. Yeah. And I cannot understand for the life of me why we're not calling it that. Because it's, this is my feeling. As long as we say it was slavery and it's racism, it's not their problem, it's ours. But the moment you give them back their label and they say, uh-uh, what really happened is you're a generation of vipers. You're a genera generation of people who have hated, who have slaughtered, who have murdered, who have sucked the blood like vampires from our generations. But for some reason, I feel that we're still stuck at we are now free. This, forgive me. <laughs> Do not be offended. I am well, you know, you know, be, 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 you This know, June, I'm... hold on. This Juneteenth crap, I call it, personally, as a black person, mm -hmm. is crap to me. Okay. I'm not a slave. Though I was enslaved, I'm not a slave. A slave and I'm not owning it. Because they didn't just enslave us. They murdered. They tortured but I don't understand why we still own it. We're still, slavery was a psychology, a conditioning, but we still perpetuate it by even by saying, I'm now free, but we're still a slave, a freed slave. I just don't understand it. So maybe you can help me. Yes, before you go any further, let's just, just to go to a quick commercial, a quick break here. No, we, we, because of time, we're not able to go to a break. So we'll okay, just let so him go ahead and answer. Oh, folks, okay. folks you know we what? listen to we... Yumi Radio. Ke New Keith, York. what are you doing? Yes, I'm just wanting the folks in the, that they understand the air. To ask the question, so could you hold? Yes. Let him answer. And I will. Okay. I, I was going to. I was going to answer. Go ahead, Tony. Yes. yes. So, so you're making a, an excellent point, I must say, with respect to a mentality, but you yes, know, and our kids need to hear it. Yes, and 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 the the, the, the the Juneteenth celebration has been going on for a long, long time. It has come into prominence as a result of this last series of events and the the, the marchers and the whole idea of uh, defunding the police and just a, just the whole idea of recognition uh, of the the folks that have been racist for so long saying to themselves, oh, we've been racist for so long, and address it, trying to address it in one way or another. I do find it a little odd, to be honest with you, to be mm -hmm. uh, celebrating a day of freedom when we more should be asking for reparations for the uh, blood, sweat, and tears for the uh, damages, severe damages, you mentioned some of them, that have been done to our culture, to our ancestors, mm -hmm. to our ancestry. Um, and and so, you know, perhaps that will be the next step. Who knows? We, we've been in this country talking about that for a little while. When it comes to certain, certainly African-Americans, and as a person who's Afro-Jamaican, I would say the people that need to do, be given reparations to us should be the, um, the British, because they're the ones that profited from us. Now, I don't know how you feel about reparations per se, but it's a matter of <laughs> at least addressing some of the ills in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and yes. some kind of admission. Because just like you said, that's it. I love, I love that you said that. Because for me, I was going to respond to your question by saying I don't really care about reparation. What I need is that admission. Right. You need to admit what you did to us, because your generations need to know. Because this is it, right? They say they're the most beautiful. They say they are supreme. They say that the, all this good stuff about them because they're white and pure. <laughs> but what they fail to recognize is the hate, the, 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 the hate that they protrude, the generational curse. We're not the ones with the curse. They are. They're the ones with the curse. They're the ones who need to look into the mirror and say, oh darn, my great, great, great grandfather slaughtered human beings. They protected animals, but my great-great-grandmother did this with the ladies, and they raped them, and they robbed them of even breast milk. 
We are not the ones, they are lucky that we are, we are great human beings. And I think it's about time we, get, we, we shift that responsibility because slavery was created with psychology. And that marketing continues. I'm a communication specialist, and I know how I frame things based on the outcome that I need, right? And that's what they've done, and we still own it. We still take it on and, and, and say, yeah, and you're racist. No, they're not racist, they're terrorists. They're not just being racist. They're not just looking at us and say, I don't like you. You're so ugly, don't come near me. That's not what they're doing. We could outlive that. They put a man down, four of them. They held him down and they slaughtered him in front of the public. Isn't that a terrorist? Isn't that a vampiric, vampiric behavior? Is that, how do we sit here and, and I'm not. <laughs> but let, let me just, uh, let, me, let, me, let me say it's, 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 we as black people, have got to get to a place where we no longer need their approval, we no longer need their support, we no longer need their reparation. Yes, but we take authority and we stand in their faces and we say to them, this is who you are, I'm gonna love you anyway, but this is who you are and I'm not going to let you pretend like this isn't who you are. We need to stop, to, I just feel that we should, but you're our special guest. I get real passionate. I, I would love to have you on my show right. <laughs> if you'd be willing to come. To oh, talk. I, 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 love, I love your passion. I, I, I'm, I'm almost afraid of exactly where we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, uh, Keith. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. A lot yeah, of passion. <laughs> a lot of passion here. Yes, I'll go and, now. And, and I, I, I apologize if I, if I cut you earlier. But I was just, That's I was, okay. I was just going to go into a break and then bring him back on. Um, this, this is you, me, radio guys. This is Let's Talk Relationships. And we all also want to know the listeners know that way they're on, what they're listening to, so they can they kind of follow. And guys, we're here with a very passionate topic and looking at the legal justice system, looking at the past of black people, what, what, we, what we've gone through and, and how we're talking about the pains of it and how we've seen the changes of it and how we can change it, uh, let's say one person at a time. But, uh, I do have a question for, for Tony. Is mm -hmm. that uh, how do you how do you see the future going forward? What do you what do you uh, what do you see as far as the, the break in the, the changing next few years from now? What what do you what are you seeing? You're talking about with respect to the movement as yes, um, yeah. Black Lives Matter movement. Yes, um, the whole. Mm -hmm, the whole I have another organization called Campaign Zero. I heard about that one too. Yes, they, yes. Yeah. They started, uh, you know, brought together by um, one of the millennials. Then the millennials are the ones that have been leading this most recent uh, uh, spate of changes. Mm -hmm. The millennials who are in their thirties, yes, thirties uh, in particular, um, who are to be given some credit, uh, you know, so far. You know, I think if they continue, obviously we're in a, a march. The march is in its what twenty. Third, twenty-fourth day, something yes, like that. Yes, somewhere around there. Yes, I think it's twenty-fourth day, I believe. So no, no um, sense of uh, sub subsiding. Um, if that continues, it will continue to influence. It's a multiracial um, group, but the group is clearly led by led by uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, okay. And, okay. Uh, you know, again, Campaign Zero was, was about police reform nationwide, and it was started, you know, maybe even several years ago. So uh, an organization like that should take the lead in the police reform movement. Many of you, you folks have heard about defunding the police and the whole movement of defunding the police, which is not, some people don't need to confuse it or shouldn't confuse it with, oh, we're, all, we're, we're not going to have police officer, officers anymore. Because at the end of the day, we can talk about, you know, the origins of the police all we want. But at the end of the day, you do have bad people out there who commit bad Crimes, right? True, true, true. We who are uh, citizens, um, who are law-abiding citizens, that you would say, who don't, don't need, the, you know, we don't need anything to make us law-abiding, but other people don't don't necessarily think that way and may come and try to take advantage of us, and we do need that sort of protection if it's done in the right way. And so okay. we need to preserve that part of the police force in terms of enforcing the law. And then we need to have the police force handling 
things differently, defunding them, move, in other words, moving some of the funding, the significant amount of money that goes to police uh, out of the budgets of typical cities, even small cities, and put them in the hands of the social workers so they can help the mentally ill, put them uh, in the true, hands of the teachers so they can help more kids. We, we direct. Hands, you know, move that money around, that, you yeah. know, create, create better mental health care systems. Uh, because of, we all know a lot of people that are in jail are, you know, are mentally unstable. Um, and, and just create uh, prevention programs that keep kids or some people from even committing crimes, you know, True. so that they don't get into the system. Instead of having this sort of industrial complex of arresting, and, we, and a lot of folks know already should know, the amount of, uh, of the population in the United States is, what, 13% in terms of black people, but about 30% of the jails? Oh, so, you know, the, the, the incarceration process, you know, focuses on us. And, you know, you know there, there's, so many, there's so much in terms of that I can talk about. But in, in answer to your question, the future would have to look like that what, what people are talking about now defunding and not having it twisted into a situation where people are making it seem as if, oh, no, we don't need a police force anymore. Because they're, again, they're bad <laughs> we, people we, out there, and you need you need exactly some level of law and order, but and not I, I, not the not the let me put my knee on your neck and suffocate you, not mm. let me choke you down, not let me try to intimidate you, yes. and, right. and and because I've got a gun and a badge, that's not <laughs> that 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 has been out of control for a while, and it's gone so far out of control that many of the police forces are like military organizations. Yes. You, wow and do any kind of marching, whatever, here come, you might as well put a bulldozer or uh, a tank in the middle of the, the, the street, the way some of these guys act. And I think wow. you know, that needs to be stepped back. And if it's stepped back in the right way, and by the way, when I say the right way, in New York, you have some things going on, not as progressive, but you have police unions throughout the country who have had their way in lobbying and creating the environment that we have here. Those organizations are not going anywhere. They're going to be making a comeback. So again, in answer to your question, if this is to be sustained, this yes. type of effort, it's got to be done in the way that's being done now on the streets, mm -hmm. yes. peacefully, obviously, but also at the ballot box, where yes. folks get to exercise mm. the right to vote, because once they exercise their right to vote, they can keep people in office that are going to be able to make the decisions that are going to be in their best interest and not have the lobbyists step in again, which they're waiting to do. So, you know, yeah. let's say another mayor comes in next, you know, because this mayor is done. We, we could be looking at a complete difference. We could be looking at the reversal of everything here. So in order for us to sustain what we need to sustain mm. and improve on it, it will require not only the effort of these millennials, but also their efforts as well at the ballot box, as well as everybody else. And, it, and, and of course, it will take some level of belief in the system, in the political system that we have. And so hopefully that will, all of this will uh, allow maybe even more confidence in the political system, which of course has been taking a hit when you look at the voting records and the voting uh, tolls. Uh, enough people don't vote generally in almost any election. Hmm. Wow. I think I think I think we have a, a, a quick a guest there. I think to kill him. Maybe he has a question he want to ask, or maybe he want to just say something. Maybe with the uh, yeah, I think it's an, it's an upcoming uh, legal uh, uh, personnel too. He wants to get into law, and uh, young man, and uh, you, you may have a question to kill him. You want to shoot it? I I was listening to the conversation in regards to the. Black Lives Matter, as well as the whole racial situation in the U.S., as well as what I've read so far, right? I was listening, I was listening to Coach Raquel speak, and I was also listening to Tony speak, um, and his, his views as well. Um, something I, I have observed, and I, I like what he's saying no, that right, they're doing no, especially the idea of exercising your democratic right to vote that was given to you by law. Right. And you should use it. It's one of the most powerful tools that you do have in a democratic society. That right. is, of course, you move those who, those who are in power to make decisions. If you, if you don't feel that, that person is making the decision in your best interest, love that. However, I just want to go back, uh, scale a little bit back to, to what Coach Raquel was saying about Andy J. Kelly. And there's something that I think um, 
she keeps referring to the the white i'm going to use that term the white presence in society as vampirism their behavior was vampirism and the terrorist however based on what history told me and based on what i learned from history slavery didn't start with the whites it started with us as black people Other, all the way back to egypt the bible yeah, yeah the Bible. I, I think the yes, I think the first set of slavery yeah. was we're correct. The first set of slavery was three thousand five hundred BC, thirty five thousand BC. The first set of slavery in Mesopotamia, yeah. and it goes forward and it goes forward. And the Bible speaks about it. Um, and that's why they had Moses, uh, Moses at the time, um, to do all his work and love his stuff, a lovely book, love his stuff at the time. But we can't if if you're gonna say okay. This person, this person that they didn't did know is horrible. What about everybody else that did it in history? The blacks were horrible. They did the same thing. They built temples and the big temples and wumps, one, I mean, pyramids that we can't even figure out how it was built to today's date on the, on the back of the same people, as well as, uh, uh, as well as we have, uh, we have in history, we have the Romans that copied that same exact behavior and built their society. We have the Europeans that came after, I think in the about, in about the 1700th century or 1600th century. They I'll started- back on that. Yeah. So are you and saying there's karma going on here? Some kind of- uh, I think- It goes around, yeah, comes around thing going on here? Is that, is that what I'm getting here? Yeah, I think is that it's time for us to stop seeing, because I think what is happening in no society, it's not, it has nothing to do with slavery. I think slave, no, no, you don't know a slave. I don't know a slave. I don't know anybody that was slave. My the only slave I knew was my great great grandmother, who, who was born after slavery was abolished. Exactly, it was abolished, and and I had the lo the luxury of, of of knowing her up until I was in high school, and and okay. what she told me from what she learned from her parents were different from what I, I'm experiencing. Know what I understand, what we what we have now. So I will never. I will never call it, say that today's issues, we, I will never say today's issues are really, it's not, it's not what they went through. What we have in now is segregation, just the idea of what, what is segregation between people. And it's true, the only way to really fix this is to change the laws and the, to truly make up a major difference is to change the laws that came down as a result of various inequality that happened during history. Yes, slavery was a part of that, but it never started there. So people already had a mindset. We all had a mindset. Everybody had preference, and the right persons were, were the right persons were never in power at that time to explain your every individual's interest. Oh, okay. now we, have today. we now have a forum where we can make adjustments and change. So let's stop, let's stop blaming the segregation and, and slavery and let's blame on each other. And we and again, I believe as well that. It's time for us also as black people to stop using slavery and using the idea of being suppressed as a weapon against the other other members of society. Like you're saying, okay, if a black man says, if another black man says something that contrary to say, like when, like when what, what is his name? Kanye made the statement that, hey, slavery, um, we made a decision after slavery to, to be in the position that we are. Whether he was right or wrong, that was his opinion. Yet we call for him to be removed. We call for him to lose his job, to lose endorsement. It's time for us to stop using it to saying that it is a weapon to be used. And, and if you're not perpetrating this idea, this gun, I'm aiming it at everybody that we find that is trying to to suppress us, or we think is trying to suppress us, to to destroy them. We'll never change because they will feel like if once a gun is aimed at you, you're gonna be in fear. And if a gun is and you're, if you're in fear. You're, you're more like it, just like a corner dog, you're going to bite just to get out. And that's just what society offers us. It will learn no better than to just bite. Yes, so wow, great, interesting point. Uh, if, if I yeah. may say, Akilem, my sentiment remains the same for anyone who slaughters people the way black people were slaughtered. Slavery is one thing. That's not all that happened to black people. Wow. So that, I, so, but I respect what you had to say. And I love that you have an opinion on it. But what has happened with black people over the past, or with, with what happened, the slaughtering, the Amistad, the, 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 the people packed on top of each other and the way they've been treated and the way we're treated now. I'm saying, first of all, I'm not a slave. I'm not, I don't know what that looks like, right? Because I will never own it. However, 
anyone, whether back in the Bible days or in today or tomorrow, anyone can put their foot on an another man's neck in public and just take his, snuff his life from him like that is a terrorist and should be treated accordingly. That's what I'm saying. So, so now, so now we see that uh, Mr. Wilson, this, our show is taking on a whole new turn, a whole new twist to it, <laughs> and I'm loving it. You know, the, the good thing about um about about this country that we're in, we can express ourselves. Um, we have our own individuality, which is very powerful. And you mentioned about the voting, we have the right to vote, that voice that we have, and we ought to use that. So, I, I tell you, um, what do you say, Tony? What do you say? Well, I got to tell you, you folks definitely are opinionated, and I appreciate it. I really, a uh, young man who spoke earlier said a lot, right? And I, he meant to say a lot. What I got <laughs> from what he's saying is that we should stop blaming ourselves and take some kind of responsibility, or blaming others and take some kind of responsibility. Either way it works, you know, taking responsibility is a, is a thing. I hear Raquel saying the same thing. She's saying the same thing. Ta uh, Post Raquel, by the way. Uh, taking responsibility for our lives and taking responsibility for everything that happens to us is an important part of this whole thing, right? So that's why Raquel is saying, you know, I'm not a slave. I don't have a slave mentality. I'm going to go out and do what I need to do. It's the mm -hmm. same thing that the young man was essentially saying, but he was saying it a different way. Yeah. And he was coming into analysis of slavery as a whole system throughout the world prior to chattel slavery, yeah. which is what began in the United States uh, in I think you muted, you muted. Hey, I meet your phone. Sorry, that's my phone again. That's all of them practiced it. So without getting too, you know, too long winded on it, we need to take responsibility, do whatever we can in this modern era, because if it's not going to be slavery, it's going to be Jim Crow. A hundred years of it, right? If it's not going to be Jim Crow, it's going to be what we've seen since uh, 1964, which is when Jim Crow ended. From 18, really roughly from 1863 or 1864 all the way to 1964, with the, that ended with the Civil Rights Act. But we have to take responsibility because even after that, we see what's been going on. We see the shootings. We see the murder. We see these situations where only recently police have been held accountable because there were hundreds and hundreds of times when they were yes. not. Yes, so, that's true. Yes. Right, so we know that there's something wrong. We know that something needs to, needs to be done. And it really is a matter of us continuing to assert our rights uh, that have been given to us or that we, are, that we deserve just like anyone else and move forward. And we're not talking about, I, I, we shouldn't necessarily be talking about only the United States. We should be talking about globally. I'm from a country that was colonized by the British, got its independence okay. in 1964, um, and, uh, and is a very young country, but has lots and lots of problems still based on the fact yeah. that it was a colonial uh, country for uh, centuries before. Yes. And if I may say something, because I remember just to kind of tie in when the question started out, Keith started out by asking about entrepreneurship and honestly I was thinking where are we going with this <laughs> where are we going to connect it but as you said just now right we have to get to a place when I, I always ask this question when someone says I'm going to look at job and I'm not I'm not knocking looking at job I just see it different but when we say we're going to look at job do we get in the mindfulness of where I'm going someone else invested in it it doesn't belong to me I'm selling my services. How do I navigate that? How do I mm. negotiate for myself? How do I put myself in a position of power, even though I'm being employed? Because how I see it is, and I'm, I've never gone to an interview. I've only been to business meetings because I know I come with something and you come with something. You will not own my life and you will not own my entire day. You have eight hours from it and in the rest, the other 12, I can, I can have as many partners as my day can fill. So I don't belong to you, right? But we, I never understand it when I say to someone, and, and I'm a success coach, so when I say things like, you are a brand, when will you establish that brand? I have no money. So uh, hmm. wow. if you have no money, but you're looking for a job, who owns you? 
whoever pays your bills, whoever feeds you. And I never understand how can we not have enough money to establish ourselves? I won't even talk about learning who you are because we think that the extent to which I should learn who I am is my history, is my, my, my ancestor's history. That's not who you are. That's interesting. You were born with a purpose. The extent of your history and who you are is not based on your, your, your four parents. I'm not saying it doesn't have a role to play, but that's, that's not the extent of who you are. Each, God doesn't make mistakes. He built us to withstand time individually. He didn't say we were to do it by ourselves. The value of relationships, you'll never get a result greater than the quality or the quantity of your relationships. Let's be clear on that. But that starts with you learning who you are. So we are in a state now where I hear even the people chanting, um, help black people to get their businesses online. I mean, so, so yeah, Akilam is right in that the whites have been, the whites even in slavery have been championing their own cause, mm -hmm. even to the detriment of other races. They have been, right? And we have made it easy. We've enabled them, but we don't take responsibility for what they've done. But we have enabled them because we feel I'm going to get up and I'm going to look a job and, and some is one is going to, so it's going to fly out of the sky and I'm going to go to this many places and they're going to hire me. And then I think I can just go there, sit and wait until the end of the month and get paid. Who built that company? Who's invested it? So this is how I see even slavery. They bought you and they brought you there. They invested. They paid for you. They paid for the, the blocks and the morals and all those things that you were doing. And I think the only true way we can really um, meet them halfway, sword in hand, is by building our brands. By building our brands and showing them that we're going to build us. We're going to build us. So even if I come to your company and I sit with you for a conversation, no, you're not interviewing me. We're having a business conversation. We're, we're working out and navigating how can we work together to achieve common goals. Mm. We have to get into that mind, mindset because we are busy saying, I don't have the money to build me, but expecting someone else to do so. I never invest in someone who doesn't first invest in themselves. If, you're, if you ask me to invest a dollar or to pay you a dollar a month for something, you should have spent $2 on yourself before I spend a dollar on you, which is why they ensured that we went to college and they ensured that we had to work harder than the rest because by the time we get to them, we would have invested multiple times what they're prepared to pay us. So they still get the best end of the deal. Mm. When will we see that? Well, you know, I think, I think, it's, I, I think that's a powerful point, uh, Coach Raquel. I'm definitely not a lawyer, and I'm definitely not Coach Raquel. This is DJ <laughs> KTE here on Yumi Radio. Let's talk relationships, y'all. And this is a great topic. I think we have, we, we, we're hearing some real powerful, powerful um, nuggets here and some thought-provoking words. And I'm sure I see Lady Misty there all quiet and looking like she's really I'm, absorbing I'm the conversation. I'm taking it all in, yeah. I'm taking it all in? Taking um, it all in. I love it. I say, I say, Coach Raquel, I just love her passion, man. She's just something else. And uh, I tell you, and, and listen, we, we, we're about to wrap it up real soon. And uh, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Earl, Tony. I call him Dr. It's my name, I'm Dr. Wilson. You know, <laughs> he's, he, he's a brilliant man, brilliant man. And Thank I said, you. like we said, we go back a, we go back a long way. And um, he's proven to be someone who, who, who was a strong black man and had a lot yes. of uh, knowledge to offer our community. And I'm happy to have him here on the, on the show. You've heard him talk about you know, his practice. You heard him talk about what he does um, and how he has his hand in so many different things that he can help us with. Um, and feel free, I'm pretty sure, if you want to give out to maybe information, Tony, let us know if you want to. It's up to you, a number, uh, absolutely. And, and, uh, name, I website. Yeah, we're here for you. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a website, uh, but I, I'm going to say that uh, I'm really honored uh, to be on your program and uh, glad to be even asked the questions I, I, I was asked and to offer uh, my point of view uh, with uh, sprinkled in with a little bit of history. Um, I didn't even <laughs> oh, get a okay, chance great. to talk much about my law practice, 
Uh -huh. um, but I've been running my practice, as I mentioned, for about 20 years. I'm a general civil litigator. Salute you, powerful <laughs> black awesome. man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We raise you up. <laughs> That's you. right. I appreciate that. Um, and so uh, everything from landlord tenant to trust in estates, wow. meaning that if someone passes away, you're going to come to me. If you want a will, you're going to come to my office. Real estate. Nice. Uh, we do real estate closings in our office. We do real estate litigation in our office as well. Nice. Wow. Uh, we also do employment law. I'm a member of the National Employment Lawyers Association, proud member of that organization, um, which That's does great. a lot of great work for employees. I'm on the employee side, guys. So even though I'm an employer myself, <laughs> nice. I, I work people who happen to be working for companies that are very not very nice to them. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, you know, I also, I also do, uh, you know, just a number of different uh, things. We work with businesses, creating uh, businesses, um, uh, you know, uh, LLCs, corporations. Nice. Um, we also handle litigation when it comes to businesses as well. Um, just a, a myriad of things. We do some criminal law as well, arraignments and, and, and appearances okay. on that level. Uh, so I'd love to have you on my show, Finding Happy, to talk about what you do. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I would love to be. Yeah. And I certainly would be equally honored uh, to be there yes. as well. Thank you. I'd love to, to hear, hear more about what you do, how you got there. That My program is a little less um, <laughs> intense than this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> Well, we're living in an yes. intense time, and I hear the way that you're talking yeah. about in terms of, you know, folks yeah. uh, making moves and and and, and, mm -hmm. and taking responsibility and moving forward. You know, that's always hot. Yeah. That's always something to do. Uh, my, right. my, I have a Brooklyn office. My Brooklyn um, office number is 718-522-3249. That's 718-522-3249. And while COVID-19 has kind of you know, tempered my office as it has done many offices uh, that were forced to close. Uh, my office is still open in the sense that you can call that number. Somebody's going to pick up the phone. And um, okay. 30 would be happy to help anyone with a consultation or you know, additional uh, issues that uh, that may come up uh, legally. I like to think of my, my, my practice as life law. And um, what, what life law to me means is those areas of law that you more than likely are going to encounter in life, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's like certain areas you like probably that. never encounter. You I know, like that, Tony. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but life law, the areas I mentioned, whether it be, you know, landlord tenant or, you know, trust in estates having to do with, you know, I mean, everybody unfortunately dies and has relatives who, who, who pass away. You know, real estate, you might want to buy some property one day, um, as, as I think everybody should be interested in, in doing that to secure a legacy for their families. Um, you know, the employment uh, aspect of what I do, uh, people got to work at some particular point. Uh, hopefully, even if you work for yourself, you may find yourself needing an employment lawyer because uh, some issue may come up with an employee. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we, we like to think of our, our law as uh, our areas of practice as life law. And um, we, we're happy to help anyone who needs it or who certainly uh, can step forward and 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 give us uh, whatever their legal issue is, and if it's a viable issue, we will we will take it. We'll take it under our wing. Wow. Well, again, well, again, thank you, thank you, Attorney uh, Wilson. I really appreciate you coming again. We truly, My truly thank you, and I'm um, sure this is going to be beneficial to a lot of listeners. Yeah. Here and social media. Very much thank so. you so much. And uh, stay blessed, and we we'll stay in contact. All right. Absolutely. Take care yes. now. All right. Yes. Okay. All care. right. Thank All you right. for coming. My pleasure. Have a good night. Yes. All right. Take you care. too. Take care. Okay. All right. Bye. Let's talk. Relationships on, on You, Me, Me Radio. Radio. So what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business. And love, emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty, and DJ KTE, on everything 
from hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationships. Arguments for the grown. Get the UME Radio app to listen wherever you are. That is U-M-E radio, one word.